Okay, we just have to go on then to the last part of number four. On a suitable diagram, we must show the position of the mean time taken, the position of one positive standard deviation from the mean, and the 12 minute mark. All right, so we'll draw up our diagram. And let me just recall my uh, numbers here. So uh, we've kind of actually almost drawn it here already. We have a mean of 10. This is one positive standard deviation to the right. So that's 11.5. So there's our mean coming down at 10. One positive standard deviation to the right is 11.5. Here's 12. And uh, so I think that we've we've uh, done what's required. We've shown those three positions. I know it's not perfectly to scale, but it certainly gives the idea. On the diagram, shade the area under the curve that represents the number of days that the milk deliveries take more than 12 minutes. So that's all of that stuff. In a period of 200 days, calculate the number of days when the milk deliveries take between 11.5 and 12 minutes. So we're basically trying to find the probability that our value of x is in between 11.5 and 12. They are asking us, well first we need to find the probability. Then we will multiply that probability by 200 days to find out what percentage of those 200 days, how many of those 200 days were between 11.5 and 12. So let's begin by doing a normal CDF. Second VARS normal CDF. My lower bound is 11.5 minutes. My upper bound is 12 minutes. My mean was 10. And my standard deviation is 1.5. And so the probability of it being between 11.5 and 12 looks to be 0.06744. I'm uh, going to do it to a, I mean, that's more decimal places than I need. But remember, I'm about to multiply it by 200. So I'm just going to use the entire amount and then I'm going to multiply this amount by 200. So I'm really saying that if this is the probability of it occurring once, let's multiply that probability by 200 to find out how many of the 200 times it happened. And so I'll take my answer and multiply it by 200. And we'll find out that it happens 13.48 days. And that rounds, of course, we can't have a, uh, we can't really have a fractional number of days in which the milk deliveries take. So I'm going to round it down to the nearest whole number. It will be 13 days in which deliveries took between 11.5 and 12 minutes. And lastly, part C, find how many minutes are needed for the fastest 5% of deliveries. The fastest 5%. So if we draw your diagram, the fastest 5%, fastest means that those are the lowest times, right? Because it's quickly, it's taking less minutes. And so we're just looking for the lowest 5%. So if we can just find this cutoff value, let's call it K, and we know that this probability, we've been given the probability is 5%. In other words, we know that the probability that our time is less than or equal to k minutes must be equal to 5% or 0 0.05. We've been given the percentage, so now we need to use inverse norm. And our inverse norm, we've been given our percentage of 0 0.05. And my mean is still 10, and my standard deviation is still 1.5. And we find out that 7.53 minutes is going to be the number of minutes. 7.53 minutes, when I round to three significant figures, for the fastest, that is to say, the lowest number of minutes for the deliveries. Now, and I'm just going to add that if it had asked, hypothetically speaking, for the, uh, what if it asked for the slowest 20% of the deliveries? I just want to quickly add on another example to show you how to do that. So 
So if we had the slowest 20% of the deliveries, then we've got here, uh, so remember that this is 10. The slower deliveries take more time. And so these are the slower ones up here, the ones that took more time. And so here's our 20% of the, the slowest 20%. Now, inverse norm only works when we're looking for a region that is less than or equal to our k value. So if 20% take longer than k minutes, that must mean that this region right here is going to be 80%. And if you want to find inverse norm, we need to change it into a less than k problem. That is to say, then, that if the probability of x being greater than k is equal to 20%, the probability of x being less than k is equal to the remaining percent, which is 80. And we must have a less than if we are going to use inverse norm. I know this question wasn't part of the problem, but I think it's worth reminding you that if you do have a region that is greater than, we must find the other amount of percent the remaining percent before you use this value in your inverse norm of 0 0.8 and so forth. Okay, that's it. Good luck on your quiz.